Your Beatitudes, Your Grace, my Lord Bishops, Reverend Fathers, and distinguished guests, this great occasion, which has been many months, not to say years, in preparation, is the result of the work of the Ukrainian Millennium Committee. And before we begin the musical program, I'd like to introduce the committee's chairman, Yaroslav Havrich. It's a great pleasure to welcome you today on this historic anniversary, the millennium of Christianity in Ukraine. There is joy and there is sadness on this occasion. Ukrainians in this country celebrate it with joy and in freedom. But there is, alas, a cloud of sadness because Ukraine, a nation of 45 million inside the Soviet Union is not free. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church and the Ukrainian Catholic Church are banned. Ukrainian people in their own country cannot celebrate this Christian millennium as freely as they would wish. In the year 988 in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, the ruler of Rus, Volodymyr the Great, established Christianity as the religion of the land. Rus was the name of the land that is now Ukraine. It was a momentous event in the history of the Ukrainian people. Christianity brought to Ukraine the benefit of centuries of learning. It released and stimulated the creative forces of the nation in arts, sciences, and social and national development. It sustained the nation in her defense of freedom against predatory invaders. The religious and national consciousness of the Ukrainian people survives even under today's oppressive foreign regime. The most dramatic evidence of this has been the recent resurgence of the Ukrainian Catholic Church, the longing for the revival of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, the incessant endeavors in the face of persecution to preserve the national identity and to regain freedom and national independence. On this Christian anniversary, let us remember all those who are bereft of human rights and suffer under oppression. The rich legacy of Christianity is evident in the culture and customs of the Ukrainian people. This afternoon, we have come to enjoy one aspect of this heritage, a presentation of Ukrainian church music. Ukrainians in Great Britain, grateful for the freedom they found in this country, dedicate these millennium celebrations to the memory of their Christian forefathers, to their heritage, and their love of freedom. We wish to share our joy and our hopes with all people of goodwill. Ваші блаженства, преосвященні владики, всечесні отці, достойні гості, пані і панове. Святкуємо цього року тисячоліття найбільшої події в історії українського народу. Це християнізація Київської Руси. Так тоді називалась наша батьківщина Україна. І радість, і смуток в цей ювілейний час. Святкуємо тут радісно і на свободі, але і сумно. Бо наш нарід в Україні не може відзначити цього свята на волі, так якби він цього прагнув. Чим важливий 988 рік? Того року володар київський Володимир Великий встановив християнську церкву в Україні. Акт Володимира впровадив український нарід, а рівночасно білоруський, в сім'ю християнських народів Європи. 
християнська релігія стимулювала творчі сили народу на всіх ділянках цивілізації, в мистецтві, в науці та в суспільному і національному розвитку. За минулі століття приходилось українському народові зазнавати важких ударів від жорстоких наїзників. Але народ перемагав. Зберігала його християнська віра. І сьогодні підтверджується це в найбільш драматичний спосіб. Це змагання за українську автокефальну православну церкву, це відродження української католицької церкви, живучість христової віри в Україні і безупинна боротьба різними шляхами за збереження нації, за здобуття свободи і державної незалежності. Багата християнська спадщина виявляється в культурі українського народу і його традиціях. На нашому святі сьогодні показаний один аспект цієї культури – спів і музика, як вираз української душі. В час святкування тисячоліття християнства в нашій батьківщині Україні будемо молитись за волю українського народу та за всіх переслідуваних і терплячих під безбожним режимом і скажемо словами поета – над ними, Господи, в небесній тверді, простри Твої долоні милосердні. Now, the composition that opened the program was a setting of part of the Byzantine rite, the Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, by the 17th century Ukrainian composer Mykola Dilecki. Church music was introduced into Ukraine by professional musicians from Byzantium and Bulgaria soon after the adoption of Christianity at the end of the 10th century. Original Ukrainian church music began to emerge in the middle of the 11th century, and many collections of compositions from this early period have been preserved. The works are for voices only, since the Ukrainian and other Eastern Rite churches have never used musical instruments in their services. The development of church music in Ukraine intensified in the 17th century, and at that time 
there were strong musical guilds in Kiev, Lviv, and other major Ukrainian cities. In 1675, Dilecki produced the first Ukrainian theoretical handbook on composition, the musical grammar, and that was also the first to be used by musicians of Ukraine's northern neighbor, Russia. It is to the music of the period from the 17th century until the present day that this celebration of the millennium of Christianity in Ukraine is devoted. Now, in early Ukrainian sacred music, chants for one voice predominated, although music for several voices was also cultivated. At about the end of the 16th century, Western-style polyphonic music was introduced into Byzantine rite liturgies in Ukraine, and it later spread to Russia and to the Balkans. The work by Dilecki we've just heard, and the first and third of the next group of works in the program are all examples of Ukrainian polyphonic music from the initial period of its development. The Kyrie Eleison for five voices comes from a liturgy by an unknown composer, probably from the 17th century. It's interesting because of its richly colorful passages and also because it was discovered in the library of Novi Sad in Yugoslavia and thereby provides evidence of Ukrainian influence in the Balkans. The first item, the Kyrie Eleison, will be conducted by Yaroslav Babuniak.
are now going to hear compositions by the three most celebrated Ukrainian composers of the 18th century, Maxim Berezovsky, Dmitro Botnyansky, and Artem Vedel. The first two were both born in Fluchiv in eastern Ukraine and began their musical education at the local music school maintained by Count Kirillo Rozumovsky, father of Andrei Rozumovsky, to whom Beethoven dedicated three of his string quartets. Kirillo Rozumovsky was head of the autonomous Ukrainian state of that period, and he established an outstanding cultural center at his estate in Kluchiv. His music library, which has been preserved, is one of the oldest and largest in Eastern Europe. Berezovsky and Bortnyansky both sang in the Russian court choir in St. Petersburg, and both studied composition in Italy, where their operas won them recognition. Vedel, by contrast, completed his main studies at the Mohila Academy in Kiev, the leading Ukrainian educational center at that time. The work of these three composers represents the culmination of the long development of Ukrainian choral music, and their compositions were on a level quite comparable to the best in the Europe of their time. The first of the works we're about to hear, O Holy God, is from a liturgy by Berezovsky. It's followed by Vedel's Penitentiae for three voices. Although straightforward in structure, it's imbued with drama and great emotional tension, often reminiscent of the Ukrainian folk epos, the Cossack Duma. Here is Pavlo Hunka.
three works in the second half represent uh, 19th and 20th century Ukrainian church music. The first is Glory Be to the Father, Only Begotten Son by Mikhailo Verbitsky. Verbitsky was a priest in the Ukrainian Catholic Church and among his compositions are settings of various parts of the liturgy and other choral works as well as several orchestral pieces. Verbitsky also wrote the music for the Ukrainian national anthem that we heard at the beginning. In his religious compositions, he alludes to the work of Bortniansky, who was orthodox, thereby reflecting an ecumenical spirit. The second work, Praise the Name of the Lord by Kirillo Stetsenko, reveals new trends in Ukrainian church music, which uh, appear at the beginning of the 20th century. There are traces of an attempt to unite ancient Ukrainian musical traditions with Ukrainian folk song elements to create a national style, if you like, in Ukrainian church music. Stetsensko was a Ukrainian Orthodox priest. During the period of Ukrainian independence following the collapse of the Tsarist Russian Empire in 1917, he was very active in organizing musical life in Ukraine, and his compositions include two liturgies, operas, vocal solos, and arrangements of Ukrainian folk songs. The third item, All Creation Rejoices in You, is a Marian hymn from the Liturgy of St. Basil the Great, performed during Lent. Now this is a very famous arrangement uh, of uh, an old Ukrainian liturgical melody presented in a simple harmonization resembling monastic singing in the Ukraine, and the arrangement is by Miroslav Antonovich, who will conduct it. But the first two items are conducted by the conductor of the New York Dumka Choir, Semen Komirny.
Well, now that uh, marvellous prayerful singing is heard in Ukrainian churches before Easter. And now we're going to move on to the joyous celebrations of Easter itself, the celebration of Christ's resurrection. First, we're going to hear a version of Christos Voskres, or Christ is Risen, a hymn from the Easter Mass. And a distinctive feature of this particular version is that we hear the echo of Easter bells. And following that, we're going to have a performance of traditional Ukrainian spring ritual songs and dances. In Western Ukraine, the songs are called Khachilka, and in Central and Eastern Ukraine, Vesnyanka. In Western Ukraine, they've been almost completely separated from their seasonal connection and incorporated into the church calendar. They're sung during Easter. Elsewhere, they've preserved their seasonal nature and they're sung when the snow begins to thaw in the hills and throughout the spring. And the songs are often combined with ritual dance. They sometimes take the form of a dialogue between two groups of performers and the songs are usually cheerful and often humorous. And the dances will be performed by the Orlik Ensemble with choreography by Maria Babic and Dmitro Paradiuk. And then we're going to hear after that a second version of Christ is Risen, this time written by Pilip Kozitsky, one of a new generation of Ukrainian composers who emerged uh, in the 20s and the 30s in Ukraine. Now the conductor at this point comes from Toronto. She's the conductor of the Canadian Vesnivka Choir. Incidentally, that word means springtime. And she is Mrs. Kvitka Kondratska.
Well, now we do uh, come to the last item in the program. It's a hymn by Mykola Lysenko, one of the best known of Ukrainian composers. His works are really full of Ukrainian folk elements and they're very national in feeling, uh, like other romantic composers such as Grieg and Smetana and so on. And the hymn is sung, I'm told, by Ukrainians in Europe, America, Australia. Some of you may feel inclined to join in perhaps. And everywhere, in fact, it's sung where people Ukrainian people feel free to profess their faith. And the words of the first verse, I think, wonderfully express the spirit and purpose of this great celebration. O oh, great and only God, protect our Ukraine, light her with the rays of freedom. 